Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today we're with guide Eric Swanson. We're sitting in his boat. We're doing a little series we're gonna call Boating Discussions. Yes, we are. We're gonna talk with Eric about the differences between spinners, super baits, and herring. Yep. So basically bait versus artificial. We're gonna talk about that as it pertains to Spring Chinook. If you guys are liking these tutorial videos, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Our little discussion is coming up next. So me and Eric were out here fishing and we thought it'd be a good good day just to get some videos filmed So yes. it was nice and sunny. So I thought dude, let's talk one question I see a lot from all the addicts out there and just online is like when to fish bait when to right. fish spinners Why to fish super baits and all that so I figured let's just break it down and just talk to a guy Who's out here every day fishing Absolutely. and kind of just get your opinion on it definitely so the first thing guys is this all pertains to water temperature water temperature is gonna decide what we're using and when we're gonna use it. Um, so basically how I break it down is kind of three different water temperatures. You know, basically 30s to 45, 47, always running bait, colder, the fish aren't gonna bite as hard. You want kind of a softer, more realistic bait. That's why we like to run herring. The fish are gonna come up, they're gonna chew on it a little bit. They're gonna spit it out, they're gonna chew on it. So bait when the water temperature is cold, okay? Next thing guys, is from you know mid to upper 40s to that you know upper 50s when I'm running these Brad's cut plugs, things like that. Pack them with your tuna, your anchovy, your different scents, things like that. And so I so, see in here you have a lot of different sizes yes. and all that. So for springers, when it comes to Brad's, yes. so what these are basically, if you guys don't know out there, I'm sure a lot of you do, but these are Brad's cut plugs and they have like the super cut they have the mini cut, yep. and then they have the kokanee cut. Correct. And so what's your favorite when you're fishing for springers? So guys, when I'm fishing for springers, I always like to run either the mini or the kokanees. Um, the springers, they're not the biggest. Um, so I like What to are some of these little colors so that you have in here, dude? These some, don't look. These are customs that I painted. I was gonna say. Yeah, so these. I've these never are, seen that guy before. Everyone yeah. take a picture. Yeah, so that's. That's some of the secret colors you could say that I'm using out here. Oh, look at that one's so fresh, it's stuck to itself. Yeah. So it's uh, <laughs> melting in the heat out here. It is hot out here. It is. Um, but guys, I like to run the, the minis or the kokanees for springers. Um, I try and match the bait size to the size of the fish. A lot of these springers are less than 20 pounds. Um, so that's why I'm running a little bit smaller baits. Run and, smaller uh, ones. Yeah, always packing it with tuna and then we use a bunch of Procure oils and different gels that we put with the tuna. And uh, you know, sometimes- so, What's your colors. favorite springer scent? Cause I don't think people really, you know, they, a would, lot of people don't use them. Right, so I think that comes down to water temperature as well. Um, you know, low, lower, colder temperatures, I like to run some anise. And okay. uh, you know, some warmer temperatures, I'll mix in, you know, sand shrimp, um, maybe some bloody tuna, things like that as water temperature warms up. So it's all a water temperature thing, guys. Um, anise, colder, um, sand shrimp, um, you know, bloody tuna when the water warms up. Okay, so break it down again. So we, what's the first temperature to, what's the temperature ranges? All right, guys, so when I'm running bait, herring, basically as cold as the water's gonna get up until 45 to 47-ish, 47 and up, I still run some bait. But, you but start then I start mixing in some of the, you know, the artificials as far as the brads, okay? Because we can pack them with some tuna, things like that. It has bait, so it's a, it's it has, a little bit of a mixture. It's, a, it's, it's bait and... It's a mixture of both. Okay. And then so I'll fish these up until that 60 range, okay? And then after the 60 range, that's when, you're that's, that's when I'm introducing the spinners. Um, you know, I have a bunch of different setups here. So basically above 60 guys, I'm putting the bait away. I'm still incorporating some of the super baits and I'm adding my spinner selection to my setup in my boat here. I'm um, seeing you got a lot of red on here. Yes. So is that is red something that you really like for I the like, springers? I like red, pink and chartreuse for springers. Um, it seems like those are always kind of my go-to colors. Um, you know, one thing I do notice guys is in the morning, um, the golds work a little bit better. And in, you know, in the afternoon, um, the coppers tend to work, um, but you know, as I say that, I've caught a lot of fish early in the morning on coppers and I've caught a lot of fish in the afternoon on golds, but it seems generally when I'm out here, um, I see, you know, gold work better in the morning, copper work better in the afternoon. Okay, so basically there's, you got three options then that you're typically fishing most yes. of the time. You're gonna run spinners, you're gonna run the Brad's cut plugs. Do you ever run the originals? Do you ever mess with the originals for springers? It's I the same thing, it's a size thing. So it's, a, it's a size thing, you know, I'm sure they work. I mean, I've seen people out here catch springers on ridiculous, crazy setups. So I'm sure the original, the banana shape, 
style would work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, I've never ran it. I've always just had luck on these, you know, smaller cut plugs. So I don't have any experience, but why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? What about all you addicts out there watching? Everyone watching, I want to make these discussions. So make yeah. sure you guys drop some comments below. Let us know what you've seen work, yeah. what you've seen work on other people's boats. Do the original Super Baits work out here for Springs? You know, and I don't see why they wouldn't because let's face it, these herring are six to seven inches long. When you cut the head off of them, they're probably four and a half to five inches long. How long is a, you know, original Super Bait? Four and a half inches long. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't it work? And you so know? talking about that, yeah. at what point are you running, do you ever run whole herring? I do, absolutely. I like for to run spray herring a lot. Yep, yep, whole herring, once the water temperature warms up a little bit and they're more willing to bite a, a little bit larger bait. Um, I have seen it before too where- Well, you uh, could go to like a red label though too. Yes, Which exactly. is a pretty smaller herring. Yeah, much smaller than the green. So let's talk a little bit about sizes. So red labels, they're like four to five inches. Green mm -hmm. labels are like six to seven. Then they have the blue label herring, which we very rarely use. I don't think I've ever actually used a blue label for a spring schnook. And they're like eight to nine inches. They almost look like a freaking rainbow trout. So, um, so, <laughs> so my, my preference when I'm running herring is reds and greens. Um, I really like a, almost a mixture of the both of them. I like a smaller green or a larger red. Um, seems like what the springers want. Um, but sometimes guys on, on a busier weekend when there's 30 or 40 boats on a particular troll, they're seeing a lot of different bait. So that's when I'll mess around. I'll run like a whole green or a small red, try and give the fish something that they might not have seen that particular day or that particular hour of the troll. And, uh, and kind of transitioning from that guys, is talking about dyeing your baits. Yeah, that's um, what I was gonna ask yeah. you. So I was gonna ask, what about like carrying and dyeing and all that? Do you play with that stuff much? All the time, yeah. So I rarely ever run a fresh herring out of the package. I would probably say 50% of the time, guys, I'm running these herring with a, a, a rock salt, um, bluing, um, some sort of chartreuse, um, brine. And then if the water is really dirty, then I'll run like a really heavy, chartreuse with lots of anise you know have the have a bigger profile bait with some lots of scent so the fish can key in on it better in the dirtier water and uh clearer water i like to run some of the naturals or some of the blues yeah i use so i use this pro care brian and bite stuff a lot i know yes. a lot of people look down on this stuff but like oh dude. to me it's easy it's just an easy way to keep your bait like fresh keep it nice keep it hard yes dude it's so perfect so it is and yeah. then they make them in all the different colors it just it's just super easy to use a lot of people use that powder yeah um and that's what i meant people looked at like i swear every time i ask a fishing guide like i asked patrick gaffney yeah i'm like do you use the liquid or the powder he's like powder all the way never use the liquid yeah. it's like i've been using the liquid for freaking years and it works you, great you know how easy and i started on the liquid stuff you know when you first start off salmon fishing you really don't know the ratio of salt to water to you know scents to this and that this is really simplified and it works. I've caught a ton of springers on the, you know, the, the pre-liquid stuff where you put your dozen baits in a baggie and you pour this over the top of it and uh, you let it soak overnight and go out there and cut it and catch fish. Um, so don't overlook the, you know, the pre-dyed or the pre-mixed dyed stuff works well. Don't, you know, don't think you're too cool not to use it. Exactly, but what, in what scenarios are you just running a fresh or, or running a cured? Are you, are you messing with it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when I'm running, a natural bait right out of the package is generally lower water conditions. Lower, cleaner, clear water um, seems like when the naturals work better. Um, and then dirtier stained water is when I really start playing around with blues and greens and, and things like that with lots of scent. Lots so, of scent and attracting. Yep, and you know, every day. Freaking just like nuclear looking chartreuse you know, ones. Yeah, you look at it in the water and you're like, why, a fish has never seen this in its life. Why would it bite it? But whatever happens it stands out it's good contrast in that dirty water yeah, yeah. Um, but i always come out here guys you know when i'm fishing four five six clients i always have a couple dozen of each because there are days where that whole thought process gets thrown out the window and they really want a green bait and clean clear water so i always have a little bit of everything and uh just in case they want something that particular day cool yep. all right so we were talking about the brine baits and i said eric let's just go to your cool real quick and grab them and exactly. show kind of what you do here so exactly guys so i have one left over from today and so I always mark my bags with different, you know, numbers, things like that. So I know what brine is what. So this is my X brine. So this has lots of salt, sulfites, um, bluing, things like that in it. And uh, certain days that extra oomph is what those fish want. So what I really want to show you guys is what the difference in a brine bait versus a natural bait is. So you can see guys, get this out of here real quick. On the brine bait, you can see it's a little bit more shriveled up 
the scales are tighter this bait is going to last longer in the water as well as it was soaked overnight and the sulfites and the salts all that stuff is really soaked into those scales and remember guys the salmon smell parts per million so there are certain days where these fish are keying in on really salty hot you know brine so what helps is tightens up the scales gets it nice and firm and has a nice smell that those fish want enticing them giving and, them just a little bit more extra enticement yep. and something to separate you from the crowd you know exactly and also the brine has a little bit of you know i like to use the liquid uv bluing from pro Cure, and it has a real nice shine to it it's going to last a long time where the natural bait doesn't quite have the shine that these guys do you may get one troll out of it two trolls three exactly. trolls three as, a, as the water temperature warms up these natural baits don't last as long in the water because the water's warm and they kind of want to mush out. So that's when I start incorporating a lot of the brine, things like that to get some longevity out of my hair. Cool. Exactly. All right, everyone. So one last thing I wanted to talk about before yes. we kind of end this little discussion is this is another one of those things that's like a combo bait. It so is. So you've taken like a bait and a spinner and incorporate them. So at what temperature are you fishing this? Anything over 50. Anything over 50 degrees. Anything over 50. I start mixing the baits with the hardware and Guys, this is a technique that's kind of fallen off the last couple of years. I don't see a lot of people running prawn spinners, which can work in our favor because guess what? When there's 100 boats out here, you want to throw something different at these fish that they haven't seen before. So that's when these combination of blade and bait can really be super effective to entice these fish to bite because that whole thing is when these fish are swimming upstream, we're trolling downstream most majority of the time, these fish are going to turn around and go chase after it. So you want to entice them somehow, and this is a really good way. The thump of the blade, the smell of the bait, amazing. Can be really effective on days where the bite not be might not be so good. So, do you ever take a spinner and put it in front of a herring? I do that a little bit in the fall. In I don't fall. do it too much down here because you you know I don't think the fish want quite that big of a presentation. Not that it won't work, but you know I do it in the fall sometimes. But generally in the springtime when I add blades, it's usually to a prawn. Awesome. How about you? You ever run a blade in front of us uh, on a herring down here? <laughs> you, well, I don't remember if you remember, but one time I was making fun of Kaplan. I think we were literally springer fishing in the Columbia. Yeah. And he put out a blade with, in front of a herring, and I the whole time I'm making fun of him. Yeah. The only fish we hooked that day yeah. was on that yeah. that setup. That doesn't surprise me. It seems like when you want to like dog or kind of talk smack about a certain setup, that's when it'll prove you wrong. So that's why. So you know what I did? I cut it off his rod and threw it in the water. Did you? <laughs> I swear. <laughs> just a terrible, just a. Oh my God. Who, who does that to their friends? Oh my God. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. All right, everyone. We appreciate you guys tuning into this little discussion. Thanks again so much for tuning in. Don't forget, we're going to have links down below if you guys want to check out Eric Swanson. Get out here, do some fishing with him. He'll be in here from the fall to the winter to the summer. He's always on the water fishing. So make sure you hit him up, get out there. Thanks again for tuning in. We appreciate it. Don't forget, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.